FBI. All right, Coach Ed Ogeron, going to stop by here in a couple of minutes on Off the Bench. Every Tuesday here at 7.30, we link up with the LSU head football coach. Tigers back on the practice field. They have uh, learned their schedule as last night. It was published by the Southeastern Conference. We mm. won at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon on the network, and then 6 o'clock yesterday evening, uh, the rest of the schedule was released. And uh, another, uh, we, we talked about the schedule last week as they, uh, they announced the plus two for, uh, for all the schools and institutions. It seems like LSU was the big winner there uh, a day after or you know just 10 hours after uh, the schedule has been released. I, I say again that LSU, this thing sets up uh, on paper to look like it gives LSU a big advantage. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great schedule. And look, I, I don't know why. One of my favorite things to do is break down schedules. Is it? Yeah, you know how everybody has like, you know, yeah. some people are mock draft guys, some people, whatever. I love uh, just looking at the schedule because th- th- there is a real flow to these sort of things, right? And I've written about it in the past where like, a lot of times, once a football season starts, it, it, it it's like a train. It's just hurtling down the tracks, and you're trying to keep it on the rails, and you got to get in or get off, right? And 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 there's twists and there's turns. But when you look at this LSU schedule, Jordy, as you alluded to, it doesn't seem to be any especially tough climbs or anything. I mean, it's a definite, it's a definite very tough middle portion, where three out of your four games, you're going to play the three best teams on your schedule. But even in that. There's a bye week, which is key, which allows you to catch your breath, which allows you to focus on Auburn and not look forward to Alabama. Like, I, I like this schedule from so many different angles. And the main thing is, like I said, the overall flow of it, it kind of looks like a bell curve, which I think plays into LSU's favor. You got three kind of tune up weeks. Uh, then you're going to hit that very tough middle part. And if you pass those tests, then you will finish off with a relatively easier landing right and so maybe you get healthy maybe you have a lot of positive momentum rolling into whatever the postseason looks like open up with mississippi state on the 26th you travel to nashville and face vanderbilt on october 3rd to begin the month of october and all of these dates uh i I saw when when the sec uh put them out uh was week one week two week three uh I, i still think that they're leaving leaving themselves a little bit of wiggle room um, to, to possibly to possibly change the dates, the times have not been announced. Yes, I, I think this. They, 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 that's the, and that makes sense. They need to leave themselves at least like have like three weeks, I would say, or maybe a month worth of time where you feel like you can move games around if you needed to. So the month of October looks like this: you open up after you. Uh, so September twenty sixth, you open with Mississippi State in Baton Rouge, and then the month of October on October third, you travel to Nashville to face Vanderbilt. You come home on the tenth to play Missouri. You travel to the swamp and play Florida on October 17th. South Carolina comes to Baton Rouge on October 24th, and then you close out the month of October on Halloween Day at Auburn on the Plains. You'll have a, you'll have a bye week to, uh, to start November uh, on November 7th. That'll be an off Saturday for LSU, and then on November 14th, Alabama's in town. Uh, so the second Saturday in November, LSU and Alabama will tee it up, and then after Alabama in Baton Rouge, LSU will travel to uh, to Fayetteville to play Arkansas on the 21st. Uh, Texas A&M will host LSU on November 28th, and then they'll close out their schedule with Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss, in town, in Baton Rouge on December 5th. I mean, honestly, look, I, I know that we've talked about this more with the Saints, the incredible home kids that they have where, they may, you know, where, where they're likely not going to be a ton of fans, if any, in that Superdome, and that hurts, right? And, and yeah, not having fans uh, in Death Valley, and, and that's not confirmed, right, but full capacity. Probably not going to happen. Not having a full capacity Death Valley for Alabama, that hurts. But, Jordy, I will take that when I look at this schedule and I see that you have to go uh, to Florida, that you have to go to Auburn, you have to go to Texas A&M, and you will actually be the beneficiary there of lessened crowds for all three of those games. So I think there's even advantages for LSU uh, in, in that regard, in terms of the home and away and fans and the impact that that could have. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of different angles to consider here. I like the Mississippi State test yeah. week one a ton. What a test. And, I, and I'm really excited to pick uh, Coach O's brain about how you game plan for this when you haven't seen Leach at State or kind of know fully what to expect, what he'll do with their personnel. But great test for Bo Pelini's defense early on. You just lost a veteran guy in Kerry Vincent that you're going to have to replace. but 
I mean, Mike Leach is a it, it, he gives him a puncher's chance, uh, not likely, but I think he gives him a puncher's chance. KJ Costello is a good quarterback, a proven quarterback, and everything's about the quarterback in football, right? We know that. It's why I'm more confident on Leach and Mississippi State this year than I am Kiffin and Ole Miss, and and I think LSU wins, but the 26 is a really big number. And like I said, I think I think Leach just he's he's such a wild card especially going into his first game. And you have a Pelini in the new defense, a new 4-3 going into their first game. There's a lot of elements at play that make that, you know, a, a, a solid first test because it's a test that you should pass so you're not exposing yourself to too much risk. But it's also not just a complete swipe your card, go through the motions, and you get the win. No, like you, you're, you're, you're going to have to play well. I like it for the fact of that LSU is breaking in a new quarterback who is trying to come out of the shadow of the most popular and best player in program history. And the whole lead up of week one is going to be about Mike Leach and Bo Pelini. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's there's fair, yeah. not going to be a lot of attention that's focused on Brennan and trying to fill the shoes of Burrow. It'll be a storyline and, and it'll be talked about, but I think it'll be, um, you know, it, it'll be a background story to Mike Leach coming to the SEC, opening up his conference play, opening up his, career at Mississippi State on the road versus LSU, and then Bo Pelini coming back to the conference and facing off against an offensive mind like Mike Leach. I think that's going to dominate the storylines yeah. in the build-up well, of that game. And, and the kind of worrying part is, is that there are a lot of similarities between, well, not a lot, but right, between K.J. Costello's story and Joe Burrow. So not saying he's going to be Burrow, mm-hmm. but guy with the guy, an upperclassman, grad transfer, um, now he's actually been he he's actually done it on the field even more than Burrow had before he arrived here, but now he gets into a situation where he has I mean what did Mike Leach have Anthony Gordon doing last year throwing like seven thousand touchdowns yeah. now granted they also lost a game where I think they led by thirty in the third so like Leach's teams they they are a wild card they are volatile but but if they can do anything they 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 should be able to score and so yeah you're you're absolutely right Miles. Uh, it, it feels like in the offense could almost, they're not going to be the main attraction week one, which is probably ideal for them. Yeah, so LSU gets their announcement of the schedule along with the SEC. Miles looked good dropping the balls he in did. in practice. He did. He did. LSU, oh, put out really... the, uh, LSU put out their video highlights from yesterday, and the media is not, uh, is not allowed in uh, to cover practice right yeah. now, so LSU's putting out some of the highlights. Uh, and at the end of the highlight package, uh, there is a one-on-one of Stingley and Chase where uh, Chase has got to step on Stingley, but really the play is made by the quarterback, uh, and, and that is just dropping the ball into the bucket uh, from, for, you know, to Chase in front of Stingley, and it's an excellent pass down the field. Uh, you can hear Russ Cal- uh, Ross Calloway in the, uh, in the background complimenting the, uh, complimenting the pass. Well, and it sounds really dumb, but I don't know why this has never hit me until we were watching this, but it's like we always talk about Stingley and Chase sharpening each other, and absolutely that's true, but... What are the advantages of Miles having to throw against Stingley every day and Cardell Flott? Like, if you can have success against the LSU secondary, even without Kerry Vincent Jr., if you can have success against that group, like, maybe Alabama. I don't think you're going to see a, 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 a side that is as talented as what LSU is bringing to bear this fall. Yeah, T mentioned to, uh, to Kerry Vincent Jr., and uh, the news came out yesterday that the senior defensive back announced that he is going to opt out of the upcoming season and get ready for the uh, the NFL draft. He dr- he joins uh, Neil Farrell Jr. Uh, in making that decision for LSU. So a couple of upper-class Tigers have announced that they will uh, skip out on this season. So, uh, well, I'm sorry. A key difference there, though, right, is Neil, Neil Farrell Jr. is not going to the NFL. He can come back. Okay. He can come back. And Vincent is is stepping away to get prepared for, for the NFL draft. We'll talk to Derek Stingley Sr. coming up at 8 a.m. on maybe some names. And then next we'll talk to Ed Ogeron here on uh, on who could be next man up behind Vincent, or now that Vincent is out, who could be the replacement for uh, for LSU in the defensive back?